Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about something a little bit more serious. And as you can see up on the screen, I've Googled uh, drone crashes and just looking at various images of drone crashes here. As what got me thinking about this is uh, I was watching YouTube last night and I noticed that a, another drone pilot on YouTube had taken his spark up to 1,625 feet. Yes, 1,625 feet. Now, sort of amazing in one way, but not in another. Uh, yet, what just really grabbed me is the fact that people really don't understand um, the impact, literally, of these devices, especially falling from such height. And, um, you know, everybody says this can't happen, people don't get injured, and, and that's really not true because uh, one of the things, if you scroll through and Google that, you'll notice this particular uh, case right here. And in this case, what we have is a young lady, well, actually a 39-year-old lady, who was struck by a falling drone, and you can see it here. And I'll put the link to this. However, uh, it was a DJI Phantom 3 drone falls out of the sky. And it's actually not from that high. Um, sorry, she's 38, not 39. Don't want to give her an extra year. Um, however, it knocks her unconscious. And again, I won't play the video here, but I'll put a link to this article, and you can take a look at it, and uh, you can see for yourself. But uh, one of the things that folks don't realize is really the impact, literally, again, of a falling drone. Now, I got into a particular um, thread discussion on YouTube with another popular uh, Canadian drone pilot uh, talking about the new Canadian drone laws and you know how basically these things will flutter to the ground and I was just floored by that because that is the furthest thing from the case uh, or from being the case and one of the things if you watch this video you'll notice this thing falls like a brick folks drones fall like bricks they are flying bricks it, unless those props are turning they're falling they do not auto gyro to the ground they do not fall like a feather they literally fall like a brick. Now, I've had personally one, uh, and thankfully it was over Lake Huron, fell from about 300 feet, and I cannot express the size of the splash it made in the water and the amount of water it displaced. And that was a SEMA X8. So, you know, something around one pound falling from 300 feet has a lot of impact. Now, one of the things, uh, hey, if you don't believe me, there's a particular site here that's interesting called the Splat Calculator. So, a free fall calculator. So, what I've done is I've actually taken the formulas from this. I'm a little bit of a math geek, so I thought this would be fun to actually. Um, take a look at how much impact a drone has. So I created the drone splat calculator, if you will. So in Excel, so I've took, taken these formulas and they're general acceleration formulas due to gravity. Because one of the things, keep in mind, gravity is a constant. So in other words, the further something falls, the faster it will fall, but also it will gain inertia at the same rate of fall because gravity is a constant. So if it falls one meter, it's basically 9.8 eight meters a second, two meters, double that, and so on and so forth. And so it creates a lot of energy. So now what I've done is I've taken uh, many of the popular drones over here and I've done a calculation over here of the amount of energy at impact. Now one of the things, I'll get to it in a minute, but is terminal velocity because this particular Canadian YouTuber uh, said, you know, okay, this thing's going to flop and fall. It's falling through the air. There's air resistance. Well, sort of, yes. So as a body falls through the air, the air is a fluid, and the fluid dynamics are applied to it. However, in general, there's not a lot of aerodynamic loss to a drone as it's falling. Again, it doesn't auto gyro. It auto gyro with a blade spin in reverse to give it a nice smooth landing. It just falls. The blade stops spinning, and there's actually very little wind resistance or fluid dynamic resistance until it reaches a certain speed. And I'll talk about that in a minute when we get there. However, what I've done is I've input. Uh, 400 feet. So basically this is roughly the FAA limit. Now wherever there is yellow you can input your own number. So I have it at 122 meters. So if we take a look at a spark uh, which is about 0.3 kilograms and if we carry it out um, 
basically upon impact from 400 feet, it will be the equivalent of being hit with 264 pounds of weight. So think of 264 pounds of weight being dropped on your head at 109 miles an hour. This is going to be a whole lot of force. This is why you see all these... Um, you know, as I was back here in, in the picture section, if you look at all these pictures, um, oh, I gotta go back here. You, you know, if we go, crawl, go up here, I mean, you can look at all the damage. And also, when your drone crashes from what you seem to be a rather modest height, why all this damage occurs? Because it's imparting a substantial amount of energy, and this energy is also proportional to the weight. So let's take a let's take a Phantom Three. And by the way, for uh, my up air fans out there. Uh, up air weighs about the same as a Phantom 3, so you can use that as a reference. But if we come over here and we look, look at the significant difference between the up air, which I mean, sorry, the Phantom 3, which is quite a bit heavier, and you look at the uh, Spark, which is quite a bit lighter. Now, one of the things I don't think, you know, from the video, it doesn't appear that this fell from 400 feet on, on this lady. It, it, it appears more like probably 20 or 30 meters that this thing fell, and, and it gave her concussion. But look at the force. So, uh, basically, the force is going to be about 1,128. Now, one of the things you look at over here and you say, well, the miles and the, the speed, why is it the same? Well, if we go back to Galileo Galilei in, in Pisa dropping the weights off the tower, you know, mass accelerates equally. So whether it's one pound or five pounds, the acceleration is the same, except it's the energy that is going to, or inertia it's going to gain by falling is going to be... Uh, and right in, in respective to its mass. So this is why you have a difference between the falling speed and the actual impact energy because obviously the more mass it has, the more energy it's going to gain as it falls. So this is uh, you know kind of important to take a look at and you can look at even very small ones. For example, even a SEMA X5 here is going to have roughly 123 pounds of force at 109 miles an hour. Now, if you look here, um, uh, sorry, that was over on joules. It's going to be 90 pounds. Uh, it was 123 joules. Uh, however, again, you look at these numbers. These are pretty substantial, again, uh, concerning speed. Now, I've also calculated in here PSI, so from a per inch standpoint, but uh, this is probably not totally a fair way to look at it, but it is also very interesting to look at if you if you distribute all that energy into say a one inch square space there is a lot of energy being dispersed and, and again this can cause significant damage now i want to talk a little bit about terminal velocity now i've done some estimates on terminal velocity this can be get to be a very complex equation uh, and also depending upon the various aerodynamics and fluid dynamics of the body so what i did is simply created a rough minimum and maximum and you can see here basically uh, 264, 264. So we haven't reached terminal velocity yet. But now let's kick this up. Let's go up to 495 meters, which is approximately uh, how high this gentleman took his spark. So I want to give some examples here. So now we've reached terminal velocity because one of the things you see here is this mile per hour has now turned red. So I've used conditional formatting to show that we've entered into the space of, of terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is going to be, depending upon the body, somewhere between about 120 miles to about 200 miles per hour of, of free fall. And again, that's going to depend upon the object's aerodynamics. Now, again, most of these are pretty much like falling bricks. Uh, you know, so I've taken, you know, basically minimum and maximum, and that's what we have over here. So if we look at the force between the two, for a, say, for example, the spark, this spark, if it would have fell from the sky, would have hit with about 594 foot-pounds of, of inertia when it struck the ground at roughly about somewhere around uh, 120 to 200 miles an hour. Now, because of the sparks configuration, I'm going to guess it's probably going to be closer to about 200 miles an hour as it hits the ground. So it's going to cause significant damage. It's not going to flutter to the ground. 
it's going to cause a major impact. This is why, you know, the FAA says don't fly over people. And, you know, even with this kind of force, think about uh, the roof of your home. You know, if you put 594 pounds up there, you know, traveling at roughly 150 miles an hour, what's going to happen to your roof? It's going to probably come through even your, your home's roof. So you're flying over a house and it drops from the sky. This is what's going to happen. And again, I've seen uh, up bears and things like that. Folks have taken it to crazy, crazy altitudes. This is the kind of outcome you're going to have. Um, so there is a lot of risk with drones. So again, I'm not meaning to be preachy here or anything like that. I simply want uh, to basically educate on, on what the literally the impact of this could be. You know, as you're, you know, have a flyaway or some other situation like this. This is why, you know, return to homes and things like that and the safety measures with inside the drone, especially as DJI has done, it's very important. So we're on low battery, it auto, auto lands itself. So I've seen and you know a number of folks end up having auto landed in the water and things like that and, and again this is a very important safety mechanism. Now one of the other things I have also done in this is I've done sort of a little bit of a free fall index. So in here you can go and this is uh, this is set basically to the FAA 400 foot height uh, settings and if we look here it, it'll do sort of a calculation for your speed as well as your force. Now this is the important piece. So so as I said before, gravity is a constant until basically terminal velocity is reached. And this is where the force of the air is starting to act against the ability of gravity to pull. And so again, we have this here. You can see this is a linear function where this is a nonlinear function of speed. So in other words, it's going to start picking up speed as it, as it falls. So again, I'll have this out on my website, uh, video-drone.diy3dtech.com, and I'll have the link below. So if you want to download this, uh, if you want to help me make this better, uh, make suggestions, hey, I'm happy to improve it because what I'm really creating this for is an educational tool. I think it's important for folks to understand um, you know their drone and the responsibilities of drone flying properly and, and what the risks can potentially be if you're out there flying a drone and uh, again a lot of people think a lot of things and these are these are serious you know uh, I don't even like to call them toys but they're serious instruments and they need to be respected you know like a firearm or anything else because they can cause significant damage if not respected so Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting. Hopefully I've shared and educated you a little bit on the different dynamics. And uh, hey, hit me up in the comments below if you have comments. The subscribe button is going to be coming over to the right. And uh, hey, hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget, I have the link for you to download this uh, spreadsheet in the comments below. Cheers.